Hello everyone, welcome back to Space Quest 1 and Yulin's Flats. So this is what happens if you make too much money. So you can see I've just won 60 bucks, or buckazoids actually, in uh, on the slot machine. And I had already something like 240 before, so um, I should have like 290 now or something like that. But the game tops out at 250. So if you actually get 250 or more buckets always from the slot machine, then you get this message. Sorry, there seems to be a circuit failure. To be reimbursed, send claim to Jibazoid Novelties, 2001, Odessa Blastway, Gurnville, Fedor, X EXL Galaxy. Please allow two decades for delivery. And that's it. The slot machine is currently out of order and it will not work for the rest of the game. So, <clears throat> 250 buckazoids. oh, Say there, pal. Yeah, we talked to you before. Yeah, go away. I want to deal with you. So I'll go ahead and save the game as enough. Um, so yeah, 250 buckazoids is the maximum amount of money that you can have in this game. And that's just enough to buy the two things that we need. Um, I'm guessing that the amount of money you have is stored in an 8-bit value, because, you know, an 8-bit value tops out at 255. So probably they didn't want to let you go more than 250 because otherwise it would overflow. Um, so yeah, so that's just enough money to buy the two things that we need. Uh, if you really want to be um, cheap or if you're really worried about running out of money, what you can do is buy one thing to get your money level back down and then go back and play the slot machine some more to get more money. Uh, you can do that instead of breaking the slot machine, but if you break the slot machine, you have pretty much just enough money to buy what you need. Um, and how long did it take me to get that much money? Maybe, it takes a while. The slot machine is quite difficult because it is really hard to win. You really have to save scum it. Uh, like I think I said before, in the VJ remake of this game, there is a way to cheat it. Um, like there's there's an actual inventory item that helps you cheat the slot machine. But in this version, you just have to save scum it. There's no other way. The, the odds are heavily in the machine's favor. You lose money like crazy. So you just have to keep loading whenever you lose. And it, it took maybe like 20 minutes or so to to get 250 bucks. So, uh, but we're, we're good now. We have enough money for the for the rest of the game, because like I said, we'll need to buy two things. So one thing, of course, is we need a spaceship. So um, let's see. Let's try this spaceship here. I tell you, I think you've made a wise decision. She's a beauty. The keys are in her. If you have any problem, don't hesitate to come back and tell us about them. It's been a heck of a pleasure doing business with you. Doing business with you. Well, good luck. Come again. All right. Enter ship. You proudly climb into your new youth spacecraft. There is definitely something unique about it. You turn the key excitedly. Well, geez, guy, it seems like it developed some, it's developed some minor malfunction since we acquired it. We did have a small micrometeoroid shower the other day. Maybe that was it. Yeah, that was probably it. Much as I'd like to, I can't re refund your money. Company policy, it's out of my hands. It's it's your company. You're the only you're the only employee of the company, buddy. However, I can give you seventy bucks away's credit on any other ship in our fine line of you spacecraft. Look around, see what you like. So basically, we just lost twenty buckazoids. And given that the guy knew that the ship, I mean, obviously the guy knew the ship would do that. So given that he knew the ship would do that, um, the ship can't have been worth more than twenty buckazoids because he he's basically his his profit overall is twenty buckazoids. So his whole plan was to get twenty. So that ship must have been really worthless if it was uh, worth only twenty twenty buckazoids to him. But anyway, so that's one ship. Uh, uh, that's what one ship does. Let's see what this one does. How much was this? How much did this one cost? Uh, this was 185 buckazoids. Okay. Oh, and since we have a credit, we only need to pay 115. Okay, that's fine. Buy ship. I tell you, I think she's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that before. All right. You shell out the buckazoids and hop in. Anxiously, you fire it up and lift off. Whoops. Darn the luck, Roger Wilco. You've crashed into the dunes and, and ended your life. The various inhabitants of the Coronian Desert are now feasting on what remains of you. Guess that wasn't guess that wasn't such a hot purchase. All right. So yeah. So both of these ships here are worthless. If you buy the left one, you die, and if you buy the right one, well, you survive, but you're you're out twenty buckazoids, which is not a whole heck of a lot. But it's I mean, what's the point? There's no point to it. So yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and restore the game called Enough. And what we want to do, obviously, is then buy the most expensive ship, which was this one back here. This is the, by, by process of elimination, this is the only one left. So how much did this one cost? It is 
214 Buckazoids, by far the most expensive ship this guy has, but um, it's the only one that actually works. So he says this... Uh, oh, by the way, you're going to need a droid to help you fly that thing. Well, good luck. Come again. Yeah, I probably will not come again. Okay, so we bought the ship. We bought the one ship that we actually need to have, so I might as well save again as bought ship. And let's see, let's get inside the ship. Take a look at it. Seated in the cruiser, you notice there are no controls here, just a button marked load. Tiny must have been serious when he said you would need a droid to fly it. So yeah, there are literally no control. You can't fly it yourself. There are no controls for it. The only controls are in the back where the uh, where the droid sits. And I mean, theoretically, you could sit there yourself, but but you can't. And if you push load, you don't have a droid to load. Okay, so that's fine. So how much money do we still have now? So we, we bought the ship. We have 36 of them. Um, so let's go ahead and load. So we bought the ship. We have 36 Buckazoids. And now we need that droid. So I remember we went through the droids before, but let's uh, let's just see what they cost again. Actually, I don't think you can ever buy... Hold on, what do these droids here cost? So the green one he said was not for sale. This red one, what did the red one cost? Yeah, even with a coupon, it's it's more than 250. You can never have more than 250 buckazoids in this game, so even with the coupon, we could never buy this droid. And I think the same is true for the other one back here. Yeah, 294, yeah, it's the, it's the same actually. So, so we can never buy either of these. But um, let's check with these two droids back here. Let's see what... Uh, so this is for flight systems operations. It will pilot any modern fighter or cruiser. And yeah, with the coupon, it costs 36 buckazoids, which, didn't I say that we had 36? Yeah, so you have exactly enough. You have literally exactly enough buckazoids if you use the coupon. With the coupon, you have exactly enough buckazoids to, to win the game. But how much did this one cost? This is a little bit cheaper. So maybe we can, uh, maybe we can buy this one instead and save a little bit of money. Let's try it. Using your discount coupon, you have made a relatively decent purchase of a pre-owned sale item. Oh, he uses the coupon automatically. You can also say, use coupon, and then he'll say, oh, I see you have one of those coupons. Okay, then you get a, a discount, but actually you use the coupon automatically anyway. Like I said, the coupons came with the game, um, so that's kind of a hint that you can use them, but actually I guess you don't need to use the coupon because, like I said, it automatically uses it. Okay, that's fine. So now that this droid will follow us. Does it do anything? You hear some zapping and popping. Um, your newly acquired droid seems to have self-destructed. Hope it's under warranty. Oh dear. And we only have four buckazoids, so I don't think we... Uh, can we go back and... Act, can we go back and... I don't think we can go back, even even if we don't have enough money. I don't think we can use the slot machine. Actually, this guy's using the slot machine again. Does that mean it's working again? You need to wait for this guy to finish. Well, he finishes when he gets blown up. Uh, or not blown up, but shot, vaporized by that laser. It doesn't take too long. You have to... I didn't show what happens when it happens to you, but I mean, it's it's basically the same thing. You just there's there's a laser beam that just comes out of the machine and it kills you the same way as it did him. So, oh yeah, it actually is working again. So okay, so if you needed more money, you could come back here and the uh, and the machine will be working again. So that's actually that's that's fine. Okay, so you're not totally stuck. If if you do run out of money, if you do make a bad purchase and you're you're really out of money, that's okay. You can uh, you can come back here and the slot machine will be working again. But that's fine. Um, in any case, uh, I shouldn't need to do that because I have just enough money to uh, to buy that little pilot droid. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, let's go up the stairs. Oh yeah, and let's give him our coupon. Just, I mean, I use it automatically anyway, but let's go ahead and just say give coupon. 
I see you bear one of those coupons. Oh, well, you shall receive 20, 20 off any of my quoted prices. I think it should be 20%, but for some reason it's not showing the percent, so it must be some kind of rendering problem with uh, AGI. Anyway, all right, so this is the droid we need. It's uh, a flight droid, so yeah. Let's go ahead and, yeah, buy the droid. All right, you've made a relatively decent purchase of a pre-owned sale item. Oh yeah, and the droid makes that little sound occasionally. Come on. Come on, do it again. Isn't that adorable? I just find that adorable, just that little... He's kind of like R2... Kind of reminds me of R2-D2. It's probably deliberate. He's probably supposed to be like R2-D2. Such a cute little sound he makes. Oh yeah, and somebody did mention, by the way, in the previous video, um, this was actually originally called Droids R Us, and Toys R Us, uh, I think, did actually initiate legal action, or at least threaten legal action. It probably sent them a cease and desist letter, so they changed it to Droids B Us, because that's not... Yeah, okay, anyway. Oh, he's such a cute little fella. All right, so, so that's it. So we have literally no money left and i don't know if the slot machine will work i mean maybe maybe we could go back to the bar and get the money back but uh actually no we can because you need at least some minimum amount amount of money to to bet on the slot machine you need at least one buckazoid to put in the slot machine to get some money back so actually we're we're kind of we're permanently broke now there's no way to get any money but we don't need money i mean there's nothing else we need to buy with money in this game so all right let's enter a ship Push load. What sector shall I head for, sir? Asks the droid. Or, I guess... What sector shall I head for, sir? Hmm. <clears throat> that doesn't work very well. What? What sector? <clears throat> yeah, it's not working very well. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm talking while breathing in. You can actually do that. You can, if, if you do it just right, you can sort of talk while breathing in, and it creates a very sort of nasal effect, but I, I never got good at it. I, can't, I haven't mastered that technique. So uh, anyway, the droid's asking what sector do you want to go to. Well, we know the answer. We're going to go to sector HH, but before we do that, let's go, just go ahead and save the game. Ready for take off. And I guess I can just tell him H H. Actually, what what happens if I tell him a wrong sector? Can I say like sector I don't know A A for example? Okay, the game doesn't understand that. Okay, so I can't just type in any two random letters and have him say, okay, yeah, I'll go there. Okay, I guess I guess I have to type H H. Sector H H. It is. I will proceed with course entry. Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going with my ship? Oh, I guess it was that guy's ship. Well, he kind of deserved it, considering that he's uh, a mugger and a murderer. Okay, if you go into the purple yonder. Oh, yeah. You might have seen, actually, in the PC version. Well, actually, I showed the Tandy version of the PC version. But most of you remember this this um, section of the game as having a pink or purple sky. Uh, or I guess like a magenta-colored sky. But for, for whatever reason, I have no idea why, they made it orange in this Apple IIGS port of the game. It's not like the Apple IIGS couldn't show purple. It, it definitely could. In fact, it, the Apple IIGS could show more colors than most PCs at the time. It, it, ha, it is definitely ca capable of 256 colors. It, I think it's capable of a few thousand colors. Not like the 65,000 colors that's 16-bit um, color. It's, I think it's capable of like... Um, I want to say 4,000, I don't remember the exact details, but it's definitely capable of showing purple. So I don't know why they did this. I don't know why they, they used a different palette and made it orange. I have no idea. And obviously they didn't change the text because it still says, oh, if you go into the purple yonder, but uh, yeah, so that's that. Well done, Roger Wilco. You've managed to overcome the elements of Corona, from endless deserts and spider droids to obnoxious salesmen and bad booze. Yes, the sand in your boots shall forever serve as a reminder of this forsaken planet. You should feel proud. But now, destiny awaits with an even greater challenge. Hang on, sir. We are headed into an asteroid field. I'm not doing anything here, by the way. 
I don't know why uh, they put that sequence in because it, it serves absolutely no purpose. It's non-interactive. It's just like a cutscene. You can't actually control the ship. It, I could understand if it was another arcade sequence, but it's not. It's just like, I don't know. Anyway. We've established visual contact with a ship of Sarian origin, says the droid. The name Deltar is confirmed. You might consider the fact that we are in danger of being anywhere near this ship. I hope you didn't waste money on the extended warranty when you purchased me. I will slow our approach and stand off at a safe distance. All right, so I see the Deltar. So this is the ship that blew up the Arcada. This is the ship that uh, that uh, yeah that destroyed the ship where we started this game. So what can we do now? Um, I said look around and it says, are you sure you want to look at that? Look at the Deltar. Before you realized the Sarian battlecruiser Deltar, an imposingly massive ship, now you understand why the Arcada was so easily overtaken. Your first instinct is to turn the ship around and head for home, but then you realize that unless you do something to try to stop the Sarians, there will be no home. Because they're going to use the star generator to... What planet is that back there? It's not Xenon, is it? I don't think so. The game doesn't even understand Xenon. All right. I don't know what planet that is, but anyway. All right. Land. Dock. Exit ship. Okay. <laughs> he just exit exits without any ceremony whatsoever. He doesn't say, okay, the droid doesn't say anything. He literally just, just appears in space and just drifts away. Darn, Roger Wilco. Upon exiting the ship, you find that you have no means of maneuvering and are subject to the whims of inertia and gravity. You quickly learn the true meaning of helplessness as death has its way with you. Well, that was unfortunate. Okay, um, so, yeah. Probably doesn't take a genius to figure out this is where we need that jetpack. This is why we needed that jetpack, and if we didn't have it now, we would basically be stuck here. So, use jetpack. Not quite one of your options. Uh, wear jetpack. You are now wearing the jetpack. A small control linkage snaps onto the back of your helmet, allowing you to control it merely by focusing on where you want to go. Oh, that's cool. Kind of like a... Uh, what is it called? Um... Like in fighter jets, there's a system where you can like turn your head uh, to, to lock on to targets because it, it actually tracks where you're looking and it will lock on to a target that you're looking at. All right, now can I exit ship? Before leaving the safety of your ship, you instruct the, the little droid to set a course for Xenon where you'll rendezvous later, providing, of course, that you are successful in carrying out your mission. Once again, you're on your own. All right. So... Oh. All right, so I can maneuver with that jetpack to some degree. Uh, you're floating in space just inside the biggest darn spaceship you've ever seen. You see a door. Perhaps it is a way in. Open door. You grasp the large handle and twist, noting the rather significant amount of pain being registered. You are extremely grateful to hear a click. Enter ship. That's up to you. Oh, okay, I have to press up there. As you enter the Sarian ship, the airlock deer, the airlock deer, the airlock door steals itself behind you. You try to open it again without any success. It appears that you are stuck here. That is true. All right. In Deltar. All right, where are we? You're in an airlock. Okay, fair enough. Open door. The door is not impressed. Um... Whoa. Okay. Whatever that was, I get the impression I should have taken the chance to go through the door while it was open. So let's try this again. Let's, uh, actually, does that thing kill me if it touches me? I, I instinctively got out of the way. I think it does kill us if it, if it touches us, but let's find out. Let's, let's see what happens. Bleep, gurgle, pop, apologizes the strange robot as he pushes you aside. Oh, he doesn't kill us. He just he just makes robotic sounds and apologizes and pushes us aside. Okay, that was... Well, I was not expecting that. I was expecting death, but okay, that's fine. Didn't really matter because the door closed again anyway, so I need to obviously quickly go through this door before it closes. I need to take that window of opportunity. Oh. All right. Hey, 
We're in a larger room. A large empty room with a Sarian ship on the wall is a vent. There is some sort of trunk on the floor. Okay. Uh, look at the trunk. Is there anything special about the container? All right. So, um, trunk. What happens when you blow 2600? All right, so... Okay, you've just been disintegrated by the Syrian's pulse ray. Perhaps this will teach you to not to loiter about on the Deltar. I wasn't really loitering. I don't think that it's loitering if you're actively walking around. I think loitering is when you're just staying in one place without moving. All right, so we can't go out there because there is a Sarian there who will shoot us as soon as he sees us. So what do we have going on here? We have, well, we have two options here. We have, the game mentioned that vent on the wall. We've also got the trunk. And this is actually a puzzle with two possible solutions. Uh, if I remember right, this is actually, it's, it's literally like, um, Sierra liked to do this back in the day. They liked to have multiple solutions for puzzles. So um, I think this, this is the only time that it happens in this game, though. So we can, uh, let's see, can we push? Oh, actually, let's open the trunk and look inside. Yeah, it's empty. Uh, okay, can we push the trunk? Yeah, let's close it. There we go. Open the grate. I uh, can't do this from... Oh, okay. Stand on trunk. Be careful. Your footsteps, footsteps and muffled voices from beyond the door. Open vent. Using using your Xenon army knife, you pry the vent open. Enter vent. Oh, you cannot... Oh. Can't... Okay. Well, we don't need the jetpack anymore anyway. Remove jetpack. <laughs> Put it in the trunk. Are you kidding me? Get off trunk. Jetpack in trunk. Done. Close trunk. Get on trunk. Enter vent. There we go. All right. Why did I have to go through the, the... I mean, I can understand having to take the jetpack off, but why not just, like, leave it on the floor or something? I guess that would have been too suspicious. I guess maybe it would have attracted suspicion. If somebody had come in and seen a jetpack, they would have said, well, where did this come from? But anyway, yeah, so this is one possible puzzle solution. There's another one which we'll probably do later, but let's see where this takes us for now. So this is a little... I mean, at the risk of stating the obvious, this is a tunnel, which probably goes somewhere. Hopefully. What's this? Your nose has just been redesigned by your ill-advised attempt to insert it into a closed vent. Open vent. You can probably open the grate which seems to be stuck. Kick grate. There we go. Looks like you jarred it loose. Nice. Come on, can I get out? Open. Open, great. Okay. Hey, there we go. Okay. Where are we? We are in the ship's laundry facilities. Nice. Okay. And if we... Uh... Oop, okay. You're a toast. All right. That didn't go so well. All right, so that's one solution. You just crawl through the vent. You basically... So you have to put the jetpack in the trunk. Um... Push the trunk up to the wall, use it as a boost to get inside the vent, and that's that's one possible solution. The other solution, I believe, is to hide in the trunk. Open the trunk, hide in trunk. Get in trunk. You climb into the trunk, the lid pounds shut above you. And now I think we just wait. You hear voices muffled, voices muffled then louder. You suddenly feel the trunk lift off the deck and the sensation of movement. After a few minutes, the trunk thuds to the floor, causing you to see stars in the darkness. The voices sound farther away, then gone. All right. As you exit the trunk, you notice you've lost your... How did you lose the jetpack? Seriously, how do you just lose a jetpack... You go into the trunk with a jetpack on, you, you climb out, and it's just disappeared. Obviously, they didn't open the trunk, because if they had opened it, they would have seen us inside and killed us. So how did how did we just... Okay. All right. It's obviously a, it's, it's a contrivance. Now I'm wondering, actually, do you get more points for either solution? Let me just quickly check. I have a points list in front of me, so let's see. So 
So you get three points for hiding in the trunk, as we just did. And I think you get three points for the other solution as well. Yeah, so I think it doesn't matter too much. Don't think it matters too much. All right, so, all right, that's fine. But anyway, let me, just to be on the safe side, uh, let me go ahead and just see what's what's up here. Is there anything, I think this will probably, this is probably a loop. This will probably just take us to the same place. But I'm just curious, just going up here, is this something else? I think this is the same same place. Yeah, it's it's actually the same thing. It's it's the laundry room. Okay, that's fine. So it doesn't really matter too much either way. That's fine. All right. So we can't go out there, but we do have a laundry machine. The laundry cleaning unit is not being used at this time. Open machine. Look inside. So, someone will be coming. You don't have time to be standing around. Oh, get in machine. Oh, just in time. Boy. Well, Roger Wilco, it certainly appears as though you're about to become all washed up. Lol, ha ha. Uh oh. Oh no. Wait, what happened? Oh, hey. Somehow you managed to survive the rinse cycle. As you emerge from the cleaning unit, you notice that you are dressed in a Syrian battle uniform. What a stroke of genius. Now you can wander throughout the ship without calling attention to yourself. Cool. Is there anything else inside the machine? All right. Secret inventory. Um, did we get anything? I don't think we did. There we go, look in the pocket. In the pocket of this uniform is, is an alien identification card. The name on the card is Butston Freem. You wonder if this is a common Sarian name. If so, you're probably glad you're not a Sarian. Let's see, so Sarian ID card. It does indeed identify us as Butston Freem. Okay. All right, now we're Butston. Good to know. I always wanted to be Butston. I'm living the dream. All right, so now we can walk around freely without uh, without getting shot at. As long as we don't lose that helmet. You're aboard the Syrian spaceship. There are two elevators here. Yeah, I can see that. Thanks, pal. Uh, look at the Syrian. He looks to be armed and dangerous. I wouldn't mess around with him. Talk to the Syrian. Surely he won't notice that we're... Uh, our voice doesn't sound very Syrian-like. Just as you begin to speak, the Syrian guard says, How many... An Alexians does it take to seduce a three-eared female sylvite? After a reasonable period of silence at your end, the guard answers his own joke. Two! He does not seem unduly impressed by your lack of laughter. Do you own King's Quest 2? asks the nosy guard. Uh, sure, yes. Great! responds the guard. Pondering his interest, you ask yourself whether or not this guy is getting a kickback from Sierra Online. Later, you realize this is silly. What would a Sarian do with money from Coarse Gold? The reason you do that is because you get five points. I don't know if you noticed, but I got five points just for doing that. So, King's Quest. All right, let's walk around, see what's going on here. Can I? Yeah, all right. So, another hallway. Let's take the elevator. Oh, it brings us down here. Okay, that's cool. All right, just exploring around, just exploring Deltar and seeing what is that thing. There's a guardian droid here in the corridor. Fortunately, it recognizes you as a Sarian. Is it going to harm us if we touch it? No, it doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> oh, this is where we were before with the... Okay, that's fine. Don't need to uh, to be there now. So yeah, these encounters are kind of random. The game randomly decides if there's going to be a Sarian or that uh, that robot here. Um, so yeah, there is some element of chance and randomness going on here. <clears throat> All right. So there's nothing down there. That's just the path back to the airlock that we came in through. We don't need to go back there anymore. What's down here? Okay, 
another hallway and another door. Oh, oh, this is back where we were before. So that just goes in a big loop. That's, that's just, yeah, okay, it's just a big loop. That, okay, that's fine. It's just a big loop that goes around. Is this door not open? It has a small sign on it. Out of order. Okay, this one's out of order. Okay, that's fine. Okay, well, this one's working anyway. All right. I think we're making progress. Oh. What's this? You're inside an enormous chamber before you stands the stolen star generator. Hey, that's cool. Let's pick it up. Let's just grab that star generator. Get generator. It is permanent... It is permanently attached to the floor. Well, how are we supposed to take it then? Saw off generator. Talk to Sarian. Leave me alone. I am guarding the star generator. Yeah, I, I bet you are, pal. All right. Well, we found the star generator. Now we just need to figure out what to do about it. Um, I'll go ahead and, then, and save here then as generator. And in the next episode, we'll figure out what to do about that star generator. And um, yeah, as you might have guessed, we are getting kind of close to the end of the game. So I don't know if the next video will be the last, but it might be. And if not, then probably it'll be the second last, probably the next one after the next one, then will be the last video. We are, we are actually quite close to the end of the game now. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I will talk to you all later. See you next time. Until then, stay chillin' in the Chrono Stream. Adios.